Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we are going to be talking about these 45 RPM records. Why does there need to be a 45 RPM record as opposed to a regular 12-inch LP? I mean, what's the point? So we got a bigger hole, it's smaller. You know, why have two formats that essentially do the same thing and are essentially from the same era? Well, let's start with a little bit of history. Back in the days of the 78, formats, not just back in the days of the 78s, but including the days of the 78s, formats and things and technology are constantly evolving. So companies such as Victor and companies that make not only records, but record players as well, are looking to, you know, what's right around the corner, what's coming up next. Now, back in these days, I would say technology evolved a little bit slower than it did today, but it still evolved. So after World War II, Things were uh, starting to look a little bit, you know, long in the tooth. So, if you remember the format war, if you've heard of the format war between Beta and VHS, or HD DVD and Blu-ray, it's kind of like that. Sometimes the technologies aren't necessarily better than one another. In the case of HD TV or HD DVD and uh, Blu-ray, they were like pretty much identical quality. Betamax was superior to VHS, but that's a separate story. Sometimes it's about the marketing. In fact, a lot of the times it's about the marketing and what other areas that they can really focus their energy on. So things were no different for this format war here. So you had a situation where RCA and Columbia wanted to be the first to market with a new format. As you can see here, this is a 78 RPM label uh, and they're advertising the new 45 RPM format on there. So let's talk a little bit about what happened. So in 1948, Columbia perfects the idea of a 12 inch LP record at 33 RPMs. No longer needed to spend 78 RPMs to get good sound. You can use vinyl at 12 inches and 33 and a third RPM and have a much lower signal to noise ratio than shellac fit a lot of music on one album, and it's only marginally larger than a 78, which in those days, size would be looked at probably as a, uh, as a, you would want a smaller thing. I think that that would be, you know, this would be more bulky obviously than this, especially because this has one song per side typically, whereas this could have multiple songs. And we're talking 1948. So this is before hi-fi, before stereo. That's another show for a different day. So Columbia comes out with this format and RCA doesn't want to sign up for the licensing of that format. They say, well, wait a minute. Okay, you've got 12-inch LP, 33 RPM. By the way, 33 RPM had been used in radio broadcast for a number of years for transcription discs. So that speed wasn't particularly new. But they're like, you know what? Why don't we uh, come out with something? RCA is like, why don't we come out with, pay no attention to the fact that it says Columbia. Pretend it says RCA. There's like, let's, let's do it a little bit differently. There were like infomercials about, you know, how much fewer, how much little shelf space, you know, a box set of 45s would take compared to the same amount of music in this old thick and heavy brittle format, you could do so much more. So instead of making an album of songs on one big disc, they would make an album of smaller discs, 45 RPM discs, and put them in a box. And the idea is you would take the box of records and you would stack it on the conveniently also available at the same time, RCA stackable record changers. Now here's what they look like. They're really cool and to restore them and to make them work these days is kind of a cool hobby that some folks are into. Fartermark has actually done this. Really, really cool stuff. One thing I want to mention too before we talk about how these work and how they stack is the idea of a 45 was also to create a higher quality audio experience and the way they did this was by putting the audio tracks the grooves further away from the spindle you think about a 78 the innermost grooves are really close to that spindle and so the groove having to turn at such a sharp angle in that curvature of the record can introduce distortion the 45 allowed the groove to be wider and further away from that center spindle. Now, here's how it works. And so the idea is you would stack the records on there and the big hole would be accommodated and the record player would drop, I'm sorry, I don't have one to show you. The record player would stack them on top, it would drop a record, play it, 
then it would drop the next record, play it, and it would do this really fast, drop the record and play it, go through the whole stack, and then you could flip it over and do the same thing to the other side and have like, I think like two hours of music based off of a stack of records like that. And how do they do it from a technical standpoint? We'll talk about that in a minute. So basically you got a format war of how best to do an album, a box of smaller records or a single big disc like this. Now, this is 1948, this is late 1948, 1949, and eventually, obviously, the market accommodated both formats. So you've got, you know, RCA and Columbia LPs, and RCA and obviously Columbia 45s, both formats found a place in the market. And in terms of what the 45 specifically became, as you know, jukeboxes, this was great for jukeboxes, and uh, stackable record changers were able uh, to play these. Now, this has some interesting design features. First of all, let's talk about materials. We all, knew, we all know that most 12-inch LPs are made of vinyl, polyvinyl chloride, and uh, by nature, you know, it is a low noise material. It's much more bendable and less breakable than old shellac, which is made out of excretions of the lac bug from India and other materials and carbon black to dye them black and minerals and all that good stuff. Vinyl, and then for these, they made them in a combination of materials. Vinyl, which is pretty common, and then a little bit less common. In fact, this particular one is an example. For those of you that have seen my uh, MPK automatic slot and record player, you will remember this unit and why it's partially destroyed. Um, it's made out of polystyrene. And polystyrene is the same stuff as this, styrofoam. This is a foamed presentation of polystyrene, just styrofoam. Can also be condensed into harder plastics like yogurt cups, fruit cups, jello cups, stuff like that, and records. In terms of a record material, it is less desirable. It's more susceptible to scratches and whatnot. Uh, this half of the record, the first half, has been damaged because this was played on a record player with too heavy of tracking force. No, it was not a Crosley. It wasn't even a suitcase player. That's a separate show. Look up MPK slot in player. By the way, I fixed that so it no longer damages the tracks very nicely. But anyway, so that's basically it. You've got a market now for both formats. So something else that you may not have realized about a 45, or perhaps you did notice and you just didn't understand why it was that way, the design of this is actually kind of ingenious. Now, remember back to when I was talking about a box of records. Now, you would seem to think, wow, this is terrible. He's got all these records stacked. The playing surfaces are touching. That's going to damage the records. Well, if you look, they are actually separated. If you look there, see, you can see right through them. That is because the hub or center of the record is raised. So this is the thickest part and this, the actual playing surface, is the thinnest part. So in theory, as long as they're not warped, these ones aren't too bad, you can have your stack of records on your stackable RCA record player and it won't cause any damage. Years later, different, and we've talked about this a bit in the past as well, LP kind of tried to compete for their you know, record changers as well, for uh, LP compatible record changers by having a raised lip and I believe it was called GrooveGuard. We've done a show on GrooveGuard, a raised hub and a raised lip. Obviously this is much bigger, so you would have uh, a harder time of keeping that surface from coming into contact with another record. But for this, it seems to work really, really well. The next thing I wanted to talk about is playtime. So in order to compete with LP and to fit more music on a side versus a single, because a regular 45 RPM disc, you're looking at a song. I mean, it's going to have a song like this, is a regular 45 RPM disc. It has a two minute and 50 second song and that fills up the width of the record. It, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but um, recording engineers have control over how much space it takes. So this could have been condensed on this record by using a narrower groove, but if there's more room for it, you can actually expand that out, make those grooves wider, which improves the sound quality, which is a really good thing. And that's why there are, I should have brought one to show you, that's why there's 12 inch 45 singles. So you'll have a 12 inch disc like that with only one or two songs on it. That's because the engineer is then able to spread it out and have the grooves far separated from one another. 
The reason for that is if the grooves are too close, you can actually get foreshadowing where you hear like a drum hit from the next revolution will actually dimple the edge of the previous groove, the preceding groove, and you'll hear an echo of a sound before it happens. That's because the groove walls are so thin and they're shared space. So if you spread that out and you widen that out, it's a better thing. So from an audiophile sound quality perspective, a 12 inch 45 RPM record, by the way, if you're interested in that, we've done shows on those, uh, is the way to go. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, let's say you have uh, a set like this and you want to include a lot of music. There's something like 72 songs in this album. And this is a record album in a different way than that's a record album. So how do they do it? So there is a version of 45 RPM called EP, which stands for extended play. And based on what we were just talking about, they squish the grooves into a much smaller, narrower groove and you can fit more music on each side. Not quite as much as a 12 inch LP, but an impressive amount of space. You can fit, I think, and I'm gonna really get myself in trouble here, correct, I don't need to tell you to correct me because I know you guys will. I think the max of a regular 45 is somewhere in the neighborhood of four minutes per side, depending on how it's modulated. And I believe you can nearly double that by going EP. So EP is not going to give you, from a technical standpoint, it's gonna be, yes, a slightly lower quality audio signal because of the you know, less modulation. Always less media, less room when it comes to analog, whether it's tape speed, groove size, groove space, is going to be, uh, you want more space, you want more tape, you want more media. So from a technical standpoint, EP is not gonna be technically as high quality sounding as a regular 45. Will you notice it? No, you're not gonna, you're probably not gonna notice it. But from a convenience standpoint, it's pretty interesting. And when it comes to marketing formats, and this goes for Betamax, it goes for this as well, part of the way they market these things is, you know, just that, marketing. So do people want MP3s that can fit 10,000, you can fit 10,000 of them on your iPhone or your, your, your phone or whatever, uh, versus the, the sound quality trade-off True, it's not as good sounding as you know a CD, but a lot of people, they don't care, or they don't notice the difference. Similar thing, so EP, perhaps not as technically high quality, but it gets the job done, and most people find it acceptable. So anyway, there you go, guys. There's some examples, and we've talked about 45s before. I love these Red Seal records. Um, these, so RCA Victor did this really cool thing where they would color code their, rec their 45s based on what genre of music. So red was the classical color. I don't have any other ones, but uh, some other records just to show you really quickly is an Elvis Presley 45, two minutes, 57 seconds. Even had little cases for them, which is really cool. Kind of hard to find them with their cases. But there you go, Columbia 45. So there you go, guys. Hope you thought that was interesting. A little history on the 45, why it exists. It's a great format. Some people prefer the 45s. They're just kind of fun and unique and different. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Give me a comment down below, thumbs up, share it out, all that good stuff. But happy record hunting, and we will see you tomorrow.